Welcome back. Here we are on day five of Crescent Campion. On day one, we learned about Peter and Andrew, James and John, and Jesus calling them to be fishers of men. On day two, we talked about Cornelius and how the love of God, the mission of Jesus, went not only to people that are like us, but to people who are different than us and people that we may not know. Day three, we talked about Saul, who was actually an enemy of the church, but through an encounter with Jesus, became the author of much of the New Testament and a huge encourager to the churches in the first century. Yesterday on day four, we talked about Zacchaeus, a man who went from cheating others and whose ways became like Jesus as he loved people through generosity and care. Today, here on the fifth day of camp, we're gonna talk about a man named Paul, the same Paul we encountered on Wednesday, but his, one of his interactions with the church in a place called Corinth. You see, the Corinthian church, they were a bunch of people like you and like me. They didn't all see the same way. They didn't all think the same way. They often argued with one another. And one of the arguments they had was, who was the best pastor? Who was the best leader? Who is it that we should follow? And some would say Paul, and others would say a guy named Apollos. And I'm sure there are other people in that mix that they were competing with as to who the best leader was. But as Paul learned about this, he wrote back to them and said, look it, it's not about me, Paul. It's not about my friend Apollos and the work that they're doing. It's the thing you need to focus on is the work of God in your life. You've come to know Jesus because I planted a seed, Paul said. You've grown in your relationship with Jesus because Apollos has nurtured you and cared for you. But the work that's really going on in your life, the work that's transforming your heart, that's reshaping the way you're seeing the world, the work that blinded me on the road to Damascus, which is where Paul's eyes were blinded and where he first encountered Jesus, that work is a result of God. God works within our lives and grows us up. Well, there's nothing we can do to make a plant grow other than to water it. But the work of God makes a plant grow just like the work of God transforms your heart and my heart. It's the work of God in Zacchaeus' life that went he went from a cheating tax collector to a generous caregiver. It's the work of God in Saul's life that went from a persecutor of the church to an encourager and planter of churches. It's the work of God in Cornelius' life who went from someone who wasn't a part of the kingdom of God to someone who was a part of the kingdom of God. It was the work of God in Peter and Andrew and James and John's life that went from them being fishers of fish to fishers of humans, to follow Jesus and encourage people to follow him as well. And so wherever you are, whatever it is you know about Jesus right now, know that as you continue to pray with him, to read his scriptures, to grow in the community of the church, that it's the work of God transforming you to become more like Christ. And that's the invitation Jesus gives to each one of us. Come and follow me. I will make you fishers of people. Come, follow me. I will change you from angry or selfish people into generous and loving people. Come and follow me and you will reflect and demonstrate my love to the world around you. And so kids, as you consider all the activities that you've done, as you think about what it means to be a son or a daughter, a brother or a sister, the work of God, as you pray to God, as you read his scriptures, God is transforming you to become all you were created to be, to take you from a young child to a mature child in the ways of Jesus. And so my hope is that you would turn to Jesus daily, that you would pray with him continually, that you would grow in an understanding of the Bible, and that you would participate in the work of the church as we pursue the kingdom of God for, together and recognize that Jesus is the King. He is our Savior. Let's finish our time together with prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the life you have given us. Jesus, we thank you for the encouragement you are and the savior that you are in each of our lives. Transform us day by day, moment by moment, as our ways become your ways, as our love becomes your love, as our life become, is given to you. Thank you for our families and thank you for our chance to be together in camp. May we remember that it is you at work in us that makes us grow, amen. Have a great day today, kids. We'll talk to you again soon.